Are you curious? Yes? Of course you are. You came to this presentation. You've bought a ticket to this event. And perhaps you're behind the screen right now. You clicked on this video. We're all curious. I am. Always have been. You see, when I was little, I was very lucky. I had a large garden. I was able to go on adventures, build tree houses, collect plant leaves, have a look at all the different insects inside a jar, try catch birds, not really. And then, most of all, try escape my homework, of course. <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, when I was eight, a game came out. I'm sure you all know about it, Pokemon. Remember Pokemon? Yes, the yellow version came out, it was fantastic. Why? Because you would have a Pokedex, and you would try and catch as many different Pokemons as possible. Just like in nature, right? So, one day, I went to one of my friends' birthday, and his name was Kevin, and he, he got himself a fishing rod, and I couldn't believe it. We both looked at each other across the room, and we knew we needed to get out this party and go to the nearest pond. So I grabbed a piece of bread on my way out, and we ran straight next door to his house. Put the piece of bread on the hook, threw it in the water, just like in Pokemon, before you are able to catch those aquatic ones, you need to get a fishing rod. So we were both excited, absolutely. I mean, we were like thinking about what we were going to call it, uh, which bath that we were going to use, maybe put in the pool of the neighbor's pool for the night so that my parents wouldn't know. And we waited. And then, bam, got a fish on the hook. So we both get really excited. He runs up and down. I tell him, just pull the thing out, pull the thing out. And he starts reeling it in. It doesn't work. I tell him to just run up the hill, you know, pull the whole thing. So, so he did it, and there it was. There it was, next to the water. And <laughs> that was nothing that we learned at school. It's nothing like a, a normal fish that we were cutting it out. No, no bright scales, nothing. We got closer, scaleless, blackish gray, tentacles coming out its mouth. What the hell was that? So we needed to take it out. We were not going to keep it. And we got closer, and then bam, it started walking. We ran out of there, left the rod, went back home for help. <laughs> what was it? It was a simple catfish. We thought it was a terrifying monster. We didn't know what it was. We thought that it was going to eat us. Perhaps... Perhaps we were uneducated. We didn't know what it was. I mean, the aquatic environment, it's nothing like out there where you can see birds, you can see rabbits running around. No, it's mysterious. It's, it's inside a, a murky water. It's, you don't see the interaction of this whole ecosystem. So from, there, from that day, I was inspired, and I went to South Africa where... I was able to do honors in ichthyology and fishery science, so everything to do with the, the, the studies of how fish work, how they reproduce, how they, everything, the biology and everything. And one of our field trips was in the Hondagat River, Cedarburg, Western Cape of South Africa. And this is my classmates, all of us, sitting in the water with snorkels, and we would look at the fish, two little cyprinids, unique and native to this river. And the project was to get rid of smallmouth bass that was introduced by fishermen for sports fishing. And we were mesmerized. They were beautiful fish. Their, their scales would shine in the, in the light. It, it was like they were weightless, and they would come to us and have a look. And this is one of my friends, Michael Dames. He, he caught a yellow fish, absolutely fantastic. And they're all under threat. But because of that project, and because we were educated and we learned about it, we were able to save this special diversity. And and in a way, it, it, it got me straight into the heart because if I'm that passionate about these fish, what if in 10 or 15 years' time somebody would, would have the same feeling as me? Maybe they deserve to have the same, the same species still there within that river. So I did my honors project in taxonomy, and one of the tools that I came across to try and recognize species was something called morphometrics. So what is morphometrics? Well... Morphometrics is the measurement of different forms. So 
you would be able, for example, you catch a fish, right? You just caught it, put it on the side of the bank, and you take a photograph. Everybody's got a, a smartphone now with good cameras. And what you would do is that you would plot landmarks on it, right? And you would require, you would require a scale. So as you can see, the yellow bar, it can be anything. It can be a Coke can, it can be your reel, anything that you can measure later on. So you would have this skeleton, this truss, and that is unique to this specific fish, to this species. It will give you uh, uh, the average length, maybe the average weight, but it will also tell you exactly what species it is. Should you keep it, put it back in the water? You can save that on your phone, and then next time that you catch another fish, you do the same thing. Of course, the landmarks, the application, this tool, will tell you where to put them. So in a way as well, you can learn all the different points on a fish, for example, where the caudal fin is, what is an operculum, it'll teach you. And then what's fun about this, because at the end of the day, fishing is fun. You can compare, you can compare them between the two rivers, the two species, you can see what it's like, and then you can also compare it with your friends. See who got the biggest fish in that river, you know, <laughs> the region, yeah, I won this one, like <laughs> this month it's the best. But what's beautiful about it is that you can have it around your own dam, but it can be bigger than this. You can share it within the public, you know, show everybody uh, what you've caught and compare and maybe start making new fishermen friends, but not only in your country, but also within Europe, within, <coughs> within the world. You can save this information. But what's more important than that is that we can bring the public to the research, combine them together. You could send those images to universities where they could analyze them and see exactly where you've caught all those different species, whereabouts, the place, the GPS, if you have on your phone, you can put the GPS, you can put more information, what lure you've used, what bait, if you found anything weird on the fish, take another shot of it. You see, you say, I saw white spots, I saw something attached to it, some other parasitic, I, I'm not sure. And you can share this information. And in a way, if they have to make new regulations about a certain area that we have to close because there's been overfishing or there's been a decrease in the species or, or maybe the temperature has, has made species moving up the coast or down the coast. In a way, the public could react a little bit better because why? Because they've contributed to the research. So all my time that I spent in South Africa, I've, I've heard a lot about Nelson Mandela, of course, and I know that he was a very wise man and very well respected. And I truly believe about what he says that Education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. And I truly believe in that. But it doesn't have to be a weapon, but also a tool, an educational tool like an app that can allow you to learn about your ecosystem. And I think that's the first step for sustainability. And in a way, I believe that it's an idea worth spreading. Thank you very much.